Welcome, this is Riley Brandon here, and you are listening to the podcast in light of, all caps, THE TRUTH. Today we're going to speak about the current topics and struggles of our day in light of the revealed truth of Christ given to us through the Holy Bible, so stick around. This is Riley Brandon, your host, and we are uh, we're back on with the Book of Proverbs. <clears throat> we're going to continue today in Chapter Six, and we're going to be reading from the New American Standard Bible Translation. So, let's go to Proverbs Chapter Six. If you got a Bible, you want to turn to it, go ahead. I'll give you just a little bit of time. Otherwise, just listen and enjoy God's Word. Proverbs chapter 6, and the title and the heading is Parental Counsel. My son, if you have become surety for your neighbor, have given a pledge for a stranger. If you have been snared with the words of your mouth, have been caught with the words of your mouth, do this then, my son, and deliver yourself. Since you have come into the hand of your neighbor, go, humble yourself, and importune your neighbor. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hunter's hand, and like a bird from the hand of a fowler. Go to the ant, O sluggard, observe her ways and be wise, which, having no chief, officer, or or ruler, prepares her food in the summer, and gathers her provision in harvest. How long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Your poverty will come, and like a vagabond, and your need like an armed man. A worthless person is a wicked man. It is the one who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who points with his fingers, who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil, who spreads strife. Therefore, His calamity will come suddenly, and instantly he will be broken, and there will be no healing. There are six things which the Lord hates, yes, seven which are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brethren. My son, observe the commandment of your father, and do not forsake the teaching of your mother. Bind them continually on your heart, tie them around your neck. When you walk about, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk to you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching is light. And reproofs for discipline are the way of life to keep you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Do not desire her beauty in her heart, nor let her capture you with her eyelids. For on account of a harlot, one is reduced to a loaf of bread. An adulteress hunts for the precious life. Can a man take fire to his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Or can a man walk on hot coals, and his feet not be scorched? So is the one who goes into his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her will not go unpunished. Men do not despise a thief if he steals, if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry. But when he is found, he must repay sevenfold. He must give all the substance of his house. The one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. He who would destroy himself does it. Wounds and disgrace he will find, and his reproach will not be blotted out. For jealousy enrages a man, and he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not accept any ransom, nor will he be satisfied, though you give many gifts. So, first off, before we um, go through the verses I want to expound upon today, I just wanted to remind you all of the goal and the aim of this podcast, and that is to exalt the truth. In our postmodern society that says truth is anything you want it to be, which is, well, 
It's not truth at all. Truth is rooted and grounded in God himself, who is the source of all reality and existence. And then to take that truth and to declare that truth to a society in as many ways as I possibly can. I'm an associate minister at Fires of Revival Church in Benton, Illinois, and so I speak from that platform often, but I also, along with many members of the Fires of Revival Church, um, from time to time we hit the streets in our local community and personally share the, the gospel in that way and from that quote-unquote platform. But this is just another way, another platform, for me to do that and to do that to the best of my ability. Now, I'm not a seminary graduate or a a man of high degree, I'm simply a blue-collar worker that loves Jesus with all his heart and believes that he is the solution to all of life's problems, and I do believe that. I found that out personally to be the truth in many ways, um, but especially the problem of death. Christ is the solution. However, I am an ordained minister, um, and I've received that ordination biblically through many years of discipleship under a well-established Orthodox, not Eastern Orthodox, but Biblical Christian ministry. I'm also a man of study and learning. I daily read and study my Bible as well as other extra-biblical resources. And I pray fervently that God would give me proper guidance and understanding on how to walk uprightly, first and foremost, walk uprightly, but then how to help others in this same way. Now my, <coughs> excuse me, my point in saying all that was to express to you my seriousness and, and commitment and deep reverence for the Bible and for the Christian faith. Um, my podcast won't always be verse-by-verse verse expositions, even though I find that to be the best way to minister, but my podcast format will be a, a little bit different for various reasons, but, we'll, but we'll, I'll always endeavor to be very honest and careful with the scriptures so as to not you know, lead anyone astray. Many online ministries these days are they're only after your attention and your money, your donations. Like many ministries before, it's the same. Online ministries are no different than televangelists from the past who were only after your pocketbook. Um, they don't really have your best interest at heart. Um, these we call in the Christian lifestyle wolves in sheep's clothing. But my only interest and I can say that with full assurance of conscience and heart. My interest is that you would hear the truth and be set free by it, but especially set free from death through salvation in Jesus Christ. Um, to, to find other um, platforms of my ministry, you can go to firesofrevivalchurch.wordpress.com. That's firesofrevivalchurch, all one word, dot wordpress.com. Um, or you can go to the Fires of Revival uh, Facebook. That's the same thing. Benton, Illinois, Fires of Revival on Facebook should be the only one that pops up from Benton, Illinois. And um, I, I minister there most mornings along with my pastor and several others who share my same convictions. So, with all that out of the way, um, let's take a look at a couple of verses from this chapter that I want to, uh, I want, I want to talk about. It's an interesting one. I knew when I read it I had to speak on this one. There was many good um, verses in this chapter, but this one was... It's its fun, but it's very, very, um, very informative. Proverbs chapter 6, 6 says, Go to the ant, O sluggard, and observe her ways and be wise. Now our first reaction to this verse could possibly be, well, can we really learn something from a tiny little creature as an ant? Well, the first lesson in becoming truly wise is humility. A wise man by the name of Socrates once said, I know that I know nothing. Meaning, true wisdom only comes to those who are willing to admit their ignorance first. Granted that that saying might have come from a pagan philosopher of ancient Greece, it still holds true. And we can know this because when we look at Jesus, who was literally wisdom incarnate, according to 1 Corinthians 1.30, he was also the most humble man to ever walk the face of the earth. After all, him being uh, God himself, did stoop down to wash the feet of his disciples, including his betrayer, Judas Iscariot. Now that's, uh, 
That's humility, if you ask me. So the first lesson we learn from the ant is, well, don't think anyone or anything is too insignificant for you to learn from, including the ant. The other lesson Solomon points us to comes to us from the following verses of 6, verses 7 and 8, which say this, The ant, which having no chief, officer, or ruler, prepares her food in the summer and gathers her provision in the harvest. It says that the ant doesn't have a ruler, a boss, yet still prepares, meaning it doesn't have anyone telling it what to do, yet it still does what it has to do. Self-motivation. How many of us have come to this place where we, uh, we truly motivate ourselves? And we're not uh, motivated by obligation. It's a tough thing to do, but necessary if we want to succeed. And when I say succeed, I don't mean become filthy rich and hoard all your money to yourself. What I mean is that, that I mean by being successful, I mean by having a, a comfortable lifestyle that's not um, denigrating from severe poverty. And you have enough that you live with dignity, but also those around you are blessed by your generosity. And, and that's the point. Uh, if God gives anybody any kind of wealth in life, it's to give back to others. For as it says in the book of Acts, uh, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So enough is enough. Worldly wealth won't make you happy. Being content with what you have is what brings peace and joy, according to Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. But the thing about true motivation is that it's not based on feelings. It's based on self-discipline. What I mean by that is everyone thinks that if they just take this pill or try this workout plan or have this particular trainer, that they will somehow find what it takes to accomplish what they need to accomplish. But no matter what you do in life, you're going to have times where you simply don't feel like doing it. That's where discipline comes in. Everyone has to overcome that desire to indulge in laziness and to get up off their butt and to do what you have to do. It's that simple. Some Christians might say, well, that sounds legalistic. That sounds like works righteousness. And to that I would say, well, first, works righteousness only applies to your salvation. And two, even once you're saved, there is still work that has to be done by faith. 1 Timothy 4.7 tells believers to exercise themselves to be godly. Or as another translation puts it, train yourself to be godly. Godliness just doesn't come. It comes as you discipline yourself and exercise yourself towards it. And with faith, along with the Holy Spirit. Paul, again, when writing to the Corinthians, said this, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. In other words, give it everything you have. Verse 25, everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. Nobody wins from just giving in to every desire and urge. Uh, those who win are those who discipline and control themselves on an everyday, day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that they do it to obtain a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore, I run in such a way as not to run aimlessly. I box in such a way as to avoid from hitting the air. I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Hear that, that, that verse there, I strictly discipline myself and make my body my slave. When you're born, you're, it's the other way around. You're a slave to your body. You're a slave to your own desires and your own will. You have to reverse that and make your body. It's like when it comes to eating. You don't live to eat. You eat to live. Food's a fuel, not a, not a luxury and pleasure. I mean, it's that too, but first and foremost, it's a fuel to fuel your body. Life, uh, it's, it's not to be just wasted on pleasure. True meaning comes in life when you, when you do that which you know to be right. Not what you simply, not not what simply gives you pleasure. Self motivation is only possible when self discipline 
is established. I'll say that again. Self-motivation is only possible when self-discipline has been established. One last thing I want to say about the ant, and that is it's a created being. Like we. We are created beings. And all created beings, like the ant, like us, eventually find their way to the grave. Solomon tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, all go to the same place. All come from the dust and all return to the dust. So if we're all heading to one place, then, then what's it really matter? Isn't that what the true nihilist says? What's it matter? Let's just have our cake and eat it too. Let's just do what we want to do. We're all going to the same place. Anyway, we're all going to the same grave. We're all going to become warm food. We're all going to become grass fertilizer. So what's it matter? Why spend all our time disciplining ourselves and shaping ourselves into something useful and, and productive just to go into the dust? Well, Hebrews 9.27 tells us, It is appointed for men to die once, but after that, judgment. <laughs> There's something far beyond this life. We are not just material uh, beings. We're not just flesh and blood and clay. We are spirits. We are souls. You see, there's one thing success, wisdom, and riches, and honor can't protect you from, and that's death. Death has a kill rate of 10 for 10. 100% of the time, death wins. You see, and that's what Jesus, Jesus came to defeat on our behalf. You see, Jesus was the other portion of the life. He was from eternity sent down into time to be a propitiation for our sins, to take us from time into eternity, because you're going to go into eternity no matter what. Are you going to go in with assurance of salvation? Are you going to go in with uh, assurance of safety? Are you going to go into it uh, on your own? Well, see, Jesus came to defeat death on our behalf. The Bible says there's only one name given among men by which we must be saved, and that's the name of Jesus. If we truly want to be wise, let us choose Christ. Remember from our last podcast, the human heart from birth is misguided and desires above all else to be self-willed and sinful. But God did not create you this way. Sin distorted you this way. Yet God commands every human to repent of this and trust in Christ instead. Here's the dilemma. You can't change your heart. You can't change the very nature you were born with, at least not without a miracle. And that is why Jesus came and died for you. Without the miraculous, regenerating power of His grace being imparted into your innermost being by faith, you would never have the ability to obey God's commands and to love Him and to trust Him. The book of Proverbs is a great book. It's a wise book. But it's much, much more than that. It's a guide a light that leads us to a transformative relationship with the risen Christ. So once again, my friends, have a blessed day. And remember, faith in Jesus Christ is true wisdom because it's the only real path back to God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you know who's going to hear this. You're omniscient. You know all things. You see all things. I don't know, very few may ever end up listening to this, considering I don't have many followers and I'm just starting, but somebody, even if it's just one Lord, may hear this message. Maybe they don't have faith, or maybe they have faith, but they've become backslidden. I pray, God, that you would touch them by, their, by your Spirit, that you would move upon them by your Holy Ghost, and that you would show them that, that your Word says, and that your Spirit constantly says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for your weary souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. If you are listening to this, and you are out of rest, and you're anxious and depressed, and find yourself chaotic, uh, come to the one who is orderly. Come to the one who can give you peace and rest. And his name is Jesus Christ. All you've got to do is submit to him. Bow your head and say, Lord, come into my heart and save me. I want to follow you. I want to repent and turn from my selfish, sinful lifestyle and come to you and live your way. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Have a blessed day.